Good morning, Insider Club members and trial users. Uh, I have uh, made changes in uh, the warehouse views and the chart views, so I want you uh, to uh, delete uh, what you have and uh, reinstall the add-on, and I'm going to show you how to do that uh, right now. Uh, this is my standard uh, layout that I use on my 34-inch monitor, daily, weekly, and monthly charts. And um, uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, show you how to uh, delete these views and uh, install the new ones. The reason I have you do this is because if you have an installation in and I've rearranged things or added charts, you're going to have a mess on your hands unless you do it this way. So open your charts, go to the Choose Create View. You can open a chart, you don't have to open all of them. Just click on my name, Ron Brown, Top Down Analysis Charts, and then go over here to the right and delete them. They're gone. Now I want you to do the same thing for the warehouse. Make sure you locate the Choose Create View. The Quick Pick will not allow you to do this. You have to go to the Choose Create View. Click on My Name. Delete it. And they're gone. And now I want you to go to the main menu of HGSI, and I have to locate it here, and select under Preferences, Install the Add-ons. And you're going to locate uh, my add-on, which uh, is uh, located on the server. The link is the same. If you, uh, well, I'll put the link in the email so you know where to go. And you're going to download it, and then you're going to locate it, and you s will select uh, the combined scans. And you're going to install that add-on. And what's going to happen, everything's going to close, and this message will pop, pop up. New systems files are available to upgrade and so on. Just click on Yes. And depending on the speed of your computer, It'll either take a um, less than a minute or several minutes, uh, but just be patient. Okay, what it's doing, it's importing uh, my market analysis user groups, uh, which are... Uh, and when the import is complete, you're going to get this. Just say OK. And let's open up the warehouse views first. And you're going to see my new end of day and um, intraday warehouse scans and they're going to look just like this. So everything will be real clean on it. You won't have any mixed views. So let's just go down here. I'll go down to Tom Williams VSA scorecard closed higher uh, just to get some stocks and I'll close this. I'll open up my charts and you're going to see the default chart. So once again, you want to go to My Charts and, uh, oh, let's just, uh, I'll go to a basic chart for now. And I'm going to fill out these charts. New charting window. By the way, to make this work, you have to go under Tools and make sure that Link Multiple Charts and Warehouse Selection Follows Charts are linked. And then what I'll do is I'll go up here to number two, weekly charts. Now you don't have to do this. I'm just doing it to lay out my screen. And uh, then I'm looking for number three for a monthly chart. Now I ha have a picture of daily, weekly, and monthly for analysis. And I'm going to be doing a lot of this at the upcoming uh, warehouse, uh, I'm sorry, <laughs> the upcoming uh, webinars. Now let me show you a few things on the uh, charts. Uh, I'm going to, first of all, I'm going to go, I'm going to choose a group. I'm going to go to my market analysis user groups, and I'll go to my major markets plus. And this is a chart that Paul Reiki asked me to include. It's from Dave Steckler. It's number 10. I put it under market charts because 
I think that's the most logical place for it. And I'll click on this and then I will select the S&P 500. And uh, this is uh, a chart that Dave contributed, Dave Steckler. A lot of you know Dave Steckler and he added the, uh, the uh, well, let's see what he did add. I'm not even quite sure. Looks like the standard deviation bands in addition to the Bollinger Band, so you can see how extended a market or oversold a market is. Now, uh, I don't know a whole lot about this chart, so uh, if you come on the Skype board, uh, Paul's going to have to explain it to you because he knows a lot more about it than I do. Anyway, he won it in, so I put it in. Now I'm going to uh, go down to... to the Williams charts and I've added a few uh, since uh, during the webinars I'm going to be talking a lot about uh, well of course we're going to be doing a lot of prospecting and I, I wanted to bring another chart down here uh, number nine I put it in here and it contains uh, lots of lots of goodies so let's um, Go to a different uh, index. I'm just going to go to all securities down here. Hold my alternate key and hit the space, space bar and you can see it's all securities. And uh, I'll just bring up the top chart here or the top stock. And notice that all three of them change because under the tools menu these have been selected when I added charts. So. What, what we have here in the top window are the 200, the 100, uh, the 50, and the 3, 6, and 18 day exponential moving average. The purpose of this chart is to put into perspective where a stock is. Now these, uh, uh, Jim Cunningham on the Skype board asked me if I could uh, add the uh, low pivots. So these uh, blue lines represent the low pivots. Uh, to give us another picture, here's uh, Gil and Chris Catcher's uh, pocket pivots. Uh, these are my windows, expansion, contraction. When the uh, 3 is above the 6, you're going to have green bars here. When the 6 is above the 18, these will be green. And when the 18 is above the 50, these will be green. And then we have the volume point of control. So this is an all-inclusive chart. I thought it was uh, important to have it in here because we're going to be talking about risk a lot and uh, uh, we want to try, try to locate uh, stocks that are, are less risky and we can see what signals were good when we go back and review a chart. Let me bring up a different chart. Uh, see, This is COLL. You can see that there were a lot of low pivots here and uh, the um, three and the six is short term. There, the micro trend uh, was under distribution here, and then it suddenly popped to the upside. You can see that that it uh, crossed here one day and then went back down. Uh, kind of hard to see. Well, I guess I could do this and make it a lot easier to see. Just make it full screen and then zoom in and. Uh, so it, it was kind of a whipsaw and then you could see volume coming into it on this bar which is the latest bar uh, went from a a weak bar one day to a strong bar and I'm not sure when earnings came out on this uh, well they don't come out till the 26th so there had to be a news item on this yesterday but this is a very strong chart with uh, an effort to rise in addition to a pocket pivot the three crossing above the six, uh, the uh, six uh, above the 18. And notice the 18 versus the 50. Uh, these two, this is the 50. Uh, the brown is the 18. It, uh, they never did cross to the downside. So this expansion contraction stayed positive. And then volume point of control. So a lot of information. In this chart, I thought it was important to include it uh, for the uh, webinar series, and uh, so I did. You'll find it in both the thin bars and the uh, thick bars. Uh, these are duplicate 
charts. Depends on your monitor and your vision, uh, whichever you want you one you want to use, but uh, they're both there. You're going to find as you flip charts, uh, uh, especially using this chart, that uh, the pocket pivots and the volume point and control and the three six crossovers are uh, three of the uh, best indicators to see when a stock is starting to move, and we'll be. Uh, covering or I'll be covering that in the uh, in the webinar series. I know all of you aren't taking it, and that's fine. Uh, you'll get all the updated files if you're in the Insider Club. Uh, you just won't uh, know everything that I'm doing in the webinars, but uh, I'll, I'll keep you up to date uh, somehow. Okay, in this portion of the video, I want to talk about a few things. Uh, the key concepts of the webinar series, February 2020. Uh, the goal of the webinar series is to locate entries either long or short based upon low risk setups where the potential risk reward is 2.5 to 3 to 1. Entries are determined by price relationships to the moving average of support and resistance, VPA flags, and so on. There's three types of risk, setup risk, intrinsic risk, and contextual risk. Uh, you'll be getting this, uh, by the way, uh, if you've signed up. Maximum risk and position sizing is determined by my spreadsheets before a trade is entered. So I'll provide uh, links to the uh, spreadsheets. Uh, uh, we're going to look at market uh, dynamics, contraction, expansion based upon EMAs, VPA flags, pivots, and price, and so on. Uh, th these are the primary uptrends. I'm not going to read them. Uh, you'll get the uh, file. Uh, primary tools, HCS with VP fla VPA flags, VPOC triggers, trans groups, stop down, and so on. Real time is think or swim. Uh, primary influences uh, from my current approach to the markets. This is uh, really unlike anything I've ever done. Uh, uh, miles away from where uh, Ian and I uh, were uh, several years ago. This this is much more detailed about uh, entries and uh, controlling risk, which is something that, uh, to be truthful with you, I didn't even know much about uh, back then. So uh, Anna Collings' book, of course, uh, the Wyckoff's original course, Method of Tape Reading, and other books. Trade Like Jesse Livermore. Uh, Frank Bunn, uh, I got, got a lot of information from Frank Bunn. He um, he used to be on Udemy, but he broke away from them, and uh, he had some excellent uh, courses. If you bought them when they were available, you still have access to them, but they're no longer available. If you want his uh, services, you have to pay him $300 a month. So, so it went from uh, a lot of uh, $10 videos uh, to uh, $300 a month, and he uh, provides uh, setups for you, and it's... He claims it's more in-depth uh, now, what he teaches, but uh, there was a lot of really good information in his videos. Uh, this reinforced uh, Wyckoff's methods of looking for low-risk trades. And then Tom Williams, Master of the Markets. Uh, that's a book that uh, Tom uh, put out uh, several years ago. He uh, passed away in 2018. The book's still available. It's uh, copyrighted, so... I really can't distribute it to you. And then Richard Day, The Wall Street Gang, where he uh, discusses uh, the manipulation and uh, so on on Wall Street. It's Okay, uh, I'm moving on to the next slide. How to find low-risk trades, a variety of scans, a few or below, low pivots, pocket pivots, expansion, VPA flag, William scan, counter trend scans, or undercut and rally, as Gil likes to call them. Uh, momentum stocks which have gone from expansion to contraction and are setting up again. This is primarily uh, what I'll be looking for or will be looking for. Change in direction. Price trend change and pivot trend change. There's two different uh, changes in directions. Price trend, trend change has two higher uh, lows on the weekly charts and then when the uh, third bar starts uh, forming um, there is a price change price trend change or two lower highs on the weekly chart for a downtrend or there is a pivot trend change you don't have to wait for the two higher lows you'll see the the pivot 
give a trend change. This is a universal signal. Higher bar on the left, lower low, and then confirmed by the next bar taking out the first bar is high. Much of my analysis will be with the Tom Williams type bar charts. I've um, what I took several uh, courses, courses or uh, webinars when Tom was still alive, and I went back and started looking at them, and I, I uh, really uh, couldn't figure out why they used bar charts when candles were available. I mean, I always struggled with that, and then I, I see his logic because uh, the um, bar charts only use the close, and it compares close to the prior day's close, and it's a stronger chart if the close was higher, and it helps uh, trends seem to be clearer than with candles, easier to determine if a bar is strong, weak bar, or neutral bar. You'll see a lot of this. Uh, I'm going to spend most of my time in the webinar looking for uh, setups. Williams charts, VPE flags, exponential moving averages are a powerful combination. And tentative workshop schedule, February 2020. I'm going to start this Tuesday, 2.30 Central, and it'll last for one hour. There will be 10 to 12 sessions, depending on how fast I get through material. All will be recorded. Uh, the first one is going to be this Tuesday. I'm going to uh, go through some preliminary things to make sure our settings are synchronized. And uh, I'll, I'll be doing some prospecting as I uh, go through my daily routine, just to show you what I look at. And then Thursday will be a continuation. If I don't finish that, there will be more prospecting and a close-up look at the Williams chart to uh, locate opportunities. So uh, that's it for now. Th this is... Uh, in a state of flux. This is going to be a visual workshop. There's not going to be uh, much in the way of written materials. Uh, uh, if you're like me, you get the written materials and you just don't pay close attention to it. I think this needs to be a visual uh, learning experience. And I'll try to uh, uh, keep these to the point where they're easily identifiable as I uh, create the videos. I'll, I'll try to put a short explanation at the uh, on the videos as I post them. Anyway, that's it, and uh, have a good weekend. I'll see those who are enrolled on Tuesday. I'll be sending out a, a notification on Monday uh, for you to uh, register for the, uh, the first... Uh, seminar and uh, or webinar and I'll try to figure out that uh, we can uh, if we can use the same login for each of them. I haven't done that yet but I'll see if I can figure that out. Anyway thanks for listening. I'm looking forward to doing the webinar. I think I've got 33 and they're all returning customers which will be helpful uh, because I won't be slowed down by people that are totally unfamiliar with HGSI and my concepts.